Hey howdy hey partners, today we're going to look at my Toy Story Custom Movie Acura Mod Collection Part 2. Let's get into it. You're watching Today I Grew Up. Hey howdy hey partners, super excited to be back again. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos. I wanted to show off my Movie Acura Custom Toy Story Collection. The last one I did was 10 months ago, so I've had a lot of changes in 10 months, and I wanted to show you my current Movie Acura collection. We'll start with this Woody. This one was a lot of labor of love. I built him myself, um, got a really poor condition 2009 Toy Story Collection Thinkway Toys Brazilian body. I dyed the jeans myself on that one, and I got a 3D printed head from Not A Toy Company out of Brazil. How funny, the coincidence. It's basically all made out of Brazil, Brazilian things. Although Thinkway Toys only released this one in Brazil. So he has a real McCoy props replica box, voice box that has Tom Hanks phrases and he has a slow retract. I found a small custom pull string ring myself. I do sell those in my shop at todayagrup.com. So if you want a movie accurate pull string ring, I do still have some in stock that you can buy. Other than that, this is a pretty much a custom job. I retouched the vest. I added some buttons from my good friend Toy Story NL. He also is an awesome Toy Story content creator. He sent me these buttons and they're from Europe. So this head sculpt has been improved. It's gonna be resent to me from my friend, not a toy company. He actually improved it so it's a little bit better. So I can't wait to get that and swap the head. Also, we have a 3D printed badge also from Not A Toy Company, which is magnetic. It comes on and off, which is great. And then obviously uh, this ruby detail right here, I did myself. I added a silver lining, which is actually a real metal washer. So I added that detail. And the jeans are real denim jeans that I dyed myself with a RIT dye kit, which I have done on this channel. And these boots are from Toy Story 4. Uh, Thinkway Toys. So most of it is Thinkway Toys construction minus a 3D printed head and also the accessories. So this Woody, all in all, in material costs and custom costs, ended up spending about $400, which isn't bad for a movie accurate Woody. I just had to do a lot of the labor myself. Next is my JC Alva Custom Woody. JC Alva is a good friend of mine who I found through the Toy Story Collection Group community. He's from Utah. Him and I did this as our first prototype for a movie accurate Woody. The eyebrows you see here are made from an epoxy clay. He actually shaved down the original eyebrows from a soft and huggable plush head from Toy Story 4. And he did epoxy clay. He sculpted the eyebrows and he set it. He also added blush on the cheeks and paint on the lips, which looks fantastic. The badge is from Not A Toy Company. We got some pearlized buttons. The vest was re-sewn to fit him a little better on his body. Although not perfect, it looks really good. And this is a white logo Toy Story Collection Woody from 2010. Here's a ruby on the side with some silver detailing, very subtle but awesome. And the boots were custom painted. And of course, my favorite feature, Andy's written on the bottom of the boot. I like to add these on the bottom of all my custom Movie Accurate Woodies because it gives it that feel of Andy's Movie Accurate prop toy. Like you grabbed Woody out of the movie yourself and that's kind of what I wanted to achieve. And inside he has a Divine Child voice box with Tom Hanks phrases and a movie accurate blistering ring that I found that I still sell on todayagrup.com. So I'm really excited for this Woody. This one cost me a total of a thousand dollars investment because I didn't do any of the labor on this. It was basically paying for labor and stitching and things like that that I couldn't do myself because it was the first Woody attempt that I just basically verbally directed. So this one cost a thousand dollars for investment. So I forgot to mention on this Woody, I didn't show you that I also wrote Andy on the bottom of the boot. So it's definitely looks a lot more like the movie when adding Andy on the bottom. Also, I wanted to show off the voice box. This is the same voice box I also have in my JC Alba Woody. Here are the phrases that he has. which is awesome because it's movie accurate and it's Tom Hanks voice. 
You're looking at a 2019 limited edition Buzz Lightyear body from the Disney store. It has Andy on the bottom of the boot, which I love. And it has great features. He talks in English. Who goes there? He talks in Spanish. He's got his laser sounds. He also has his famous karate chop action, which is something they should have put in the collection buzz. And of course he glows in the dark very brightly, which is amazing. And the custom part about him is that he's got a Thinkway Toys head that I got from a budget buzz from Walmart. It was a good head sculpt and I thought why not swap the head out because the Disney store buzz I did not like. So this is a movie accurate inspired Buzz Lightyear mod, basically a head swap and a very rare 2019 limited edition Disney store body. And there you go, you have more of a movie accurate Buzz Lightyear, which I showed off in this channel as a good budget option. If you can find this though, because they sold out back in the day really fast in 2019 for this Buzz. This Buzz cost me a total of $90, $60 for the body, $30 for the head. Next Buzz Lightyear that I have is from Ranger Customs. He's my favorite movie accurate mod. As you can tell, he has his face shield open and it looks like it's resting there, how it was in the movie. He had a little bit of a helmet there resting there. Now, it's not fully retractable. I wish it was. Uh, that's the next mod that I'd like to do is somehow figure out a way to get this to come back and retract all the way in his body. Right now, it's not designed for that because he has so many electronics in here. And maybe one day, you know, I'll work on it. I always say, you know, let's make impossible impossible. It's, I'm not saying it's impossible, but, you know, it'd be great. His arm joint, it goes really high and goes really low, which is really nice. So I really like that his uh, arm sockets were modded by Ranger Customs. Superb job on that. So we can put his arms very low, which is awesome. And of course, he painted the details of the green on his wings. So we have all that matching paint of course we have andy on the bottom that i wrote there which is awesome movie accurate prop definitely looks like buzz from toy story 3 that's what i was going for that's why i chose these darker purple colors and this toy mode head that was modified from a signature collection buzz lightyear rubber material here which is awesome it comes like that and we also have these little ball joints right here so no magnets or anything so it doesn't fall off really great and this is my favorite buzz Visually, he looks awesome and, you know, it's just more movie accurate because of all these little details. The one thing I wish he had is karate chop action. One day I'm going to add a real laser in here. But until then, this is an amazing Buzz Lightyear. It's technically a signature collection Buzz Lightyear modified from Ranger Customs on Instagram. Great guy. This toy cost me about $100, the body, and to modify him, about $450. So you're looking at $550 investment for this custom Buzz. This next Buzz Lightyear is the latest custom I made, which is a Mrs. Nesbitt Buzz Lightyear. It is a modified Disney Store generic Buzz. This apron was made by my friend Zaneda on Second Zekin Hand Store. It's called an Etsy. You can look it up on Etsy. And it's only about $20 or $15. It was a very inexpensive kit. It came with the hat, the apron. And of course, we have the teacup because Buzz has been sucking down on Darjeeling and he's had enough tea for today. So this was an awesome little bonus that I got. Uh, it's a nice little handmade teacup, which is really cool. And then of course I ripped off Buzz Lightyear's other arm. And later on when Woody says, hey Buzz, give me a hand. Very funny. Well, I can do that too. So this is a really fun, a fun one. I, I really enjoy this Mrs. Nesbitt Buzz. Come on Disney Store, you gotta make this. So the Disney Store Buzz costs about $30. You actually see a modified head swap of a closed mouth smile Buzz. That was about $30 as well, which is funny because that toy costs as much as the, as the Buzz Disney Store one you see, plus the investment of the apron, custom apron and, and stuff, that this total investment would be about um, $80. Next we have Jessie, my custom Jessie. This is my one of my favorite mods. Uh, her hair was shaved off her head and uh, I added some vinyl stitching on the hat and we laid the hair strands one by one carefully on her head, glued them on and then rebraided the hair back there. Painted the eyebrows brown. We added uh, Toy Story Now helped me with these European and uh, from Europe buttons that are pearlized, milky white like the movie. And then this is a UK Mattel body, very rare from 2015, I believe. And these chaps are from a signature collection Jesse because I felt like the signature collection Jesse chaps 
from Thinkway Toys were very, very accurate to the movie. So this is an amazing uh, Jesse, and I documented this journey on this channel. So if you want to see how this Jesse was made, go to my Movie Accurate Mod playlist, and you'll see how I modded this Jesse. As you can see here, Jesse's hair looks awesome. The original one was too thick, so it had to be redone. I just think this looks so clean now, and it's real yarn. Got it from the, the craft store, real yarn. And then she actually still has a voice box with Jesse phrases that came from the UK Mattel body. And then here hanging here is a movie accurate size pull string ring that I sell in my shop, todayagrew.com. And so yeah, all these elements together, it was amazing. Uh, because I did some, a lot of the work myself, the cost obviously is lower because I didn't pay anybody to do anything. So the UK Mattel body cost me used online, it wasn't too bad, I think it was about $60. And then uh, the head is actually from a signature collection Jesse that cost $90. So the total investment to make this Jesse possible was $150. But I think for $150 it's worth it considering the new signature collection Jesse's are $90 at retail. So I really love this Jesse and I wish the toy companies made her more like this. Um, and just that you can't tell bodies. It's slender, it's thinner, it's definitely more movie accurate in my opinion. And I wish the toy companies made this Jesse like this. Now here's one of my more inexpensive movie accurate custom mods that didn't cost a lot of money but ended up coming out really amazing for Toy Story 4 in 2019. And I added a slinky, a real slinky from the slinky company. So now it has a better metal slinky on him that stretches really long and far. Very movie accurate. And then his ears are real leather. So I cut some real leather and then I super glued it there in his head, took out the old ones, and now he has on the underside brown leather, which is more movie accurate. The original ears that it came with were pretty cheap, and it was white underneath, and it didn't look like the movie. So I had to do the leather ears mod. I wanted to do a better slinky mod, so he has a better quality slinky. And all in all, it came out amazing, and I think the slinky dog looks more like the movie. And I wish the toy companies would release this to everybody like this, or at least a custom you know movie accurate inspired toy would be great so slinky cost about 15 bucks back then in 2019 which is cheap and i think the leather ears when i bought a leather set it was 15 dollars as well because it's real leather so all in all i spent about 30 dollars for this slinky dog and i think he looks just like the movie obviously it'd be cool if we can break the legs and articulate them more but i don't want to ruin this because he's more of a display piece but he definitely is movie accurate inspired and he looks amazing in my opinion. And here we have the big boy, Woody's Roundup, Pull String, Nine Different Saints, Movie Accurate Stinky Pete, the most expensive, one of the most expensive in my Movie Accurate collection, a thousand dollars to make this by cop on Instagram. He hand sculpted it, he talks, he has a pull string, he does talk like the movie and says phrases from the movie. So it's amazing to have a Woody's Roundup, he did come with a pickaxe in there as well. So this one is amazing. There's very few boxes in the movies featured throughout the Toy Story series. And having him in box, never been opened as Jesse says, is really amazing because I like, I like movie accurate props. And to me, this looks like I went to Alice Toy Barn in real life and I shopped there. And guess what? I picked up a Stinky Pete in real life, which is cool. Bringing that fantasy into reality. Um, was always kind of like intriguing to me that you can go like you're going into the movie pull it out in real life and then owning that movie prop uh, this is my dream one of my dream come true is to own uh, movie accurate stinky pete and although it cost me a thousand dollars the stories are never going to make this i don't know i've lost hope with the toy makers at this point i don't think they're ever going to give us exactly what we want so that's why i took matter to my own hands hired somebody had to make it for me and now my dream has come true. A movie accurate Stinky Pete the Prospector mint in the box. Next we have a movie accurate Buzz Lightyear instruction manual. I used this in a very famous live action on my channel. That actually went, got a lot of views on it. But it's really cool. Basically it's repeating. It was a very short manual to begin with. It, would, it started here, ended there. So what I did is I repeated some pages to make it look longer. So I just repeated it twice. Uh, made it like a longer looking booklet. Now this is something that I found on Etsy No longer there. I don't know. I need to hunt it down and see why we can't Get the original file. I don't even think I have it. I'm gonna look for it But it's really cool to have a Buzz Lightyear manual as we saw 
him reading it in Toy Story 3 to put Buzz in Spanish mode. So I definitely wanted to have this. And then this Buzz Lightyear box was free. Can you believe it? Uh, my very good friend, Nakate Nagasi, uh, he was a fan of my channel. He's like, you know what? I'm working on a Buzz Movie Acker box. You want one? I'm like, yeah, send it to me. And he did. And I wanted to pay him, but he's like, no, I'll send it to you for free for the fans. So very nice guy. He showed us that impossible could be possible. Gave us a movie accurate box. My favorite part here. On the back says, Buzz Lightyear here. I am stationed in the Gamma Quadrant of Sector 4 as a member of the Elite Universe Protection Unit, the Space Ranger Corps. I protect the galaxy from the threat of invasion from the evil Emperor Zerg, sworn enemy of the Galactic Alliance. So it's very true to the film when Buzz is reading that to Woody, while well, he's reciting it to Woody in Toy Story 1. And we have the official proof of purchase. And this again, another box. There's very few boxes featured in Toy Story, but this one's very iconic. Uh, and the top is correct as well. I have a white logo, my first Buzz Lightyear I ever got. It's just a regular Thinkway Toys 2010 white logo. And then on the bottom, which is the amazing part, we have actual the jet rocket boosters right there. And the wings are really movie accurate. The way they were designed in the movie were like that. Very sturdy. They're not going to bend or go anywhere, which is so incredible. <laughs> like this is my favorite, uh, one of my favorite movie accurate props. They all are, but just to have a movie accurate finally Buzz Lightyear box just like we see it oriented in the movie because the Thinkway Toys collection one was too wide and fat and short and stubby and it had a bunch of extra stuff on there that's not movie accurate so this is a dream come true to own a actual movie replica box and it was free it didn't cost me anything so total investment for me uh, was only 20 bucks but yeah that was because I got a friend who helped me out with this box for free here we go the very famous Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head movie accurate so these were <laughs> i will say this was a headache to make um i hired somebody named steph stefan or wanders replica creations he went out of business he no longer makes 3d printing that i know of uh but he helped me design the body my first attempt at making a custom potato head missing a little booty but other than that i'm just glad it functions like the movie we actually have a working back compartment where we can put all his stuff I have some magnets in there to reinforce the closure because it didn't close properly, but with magnets it does. And then I actually paid him about $480 for the body with shipping. It was, it was from the Netherlands, so it was expensive. And then the bendy arms and accessories and everything else you see, uh, bl custom blind squirrel prop eyes. These were about $20. I found them on Etsy. And uh, these were pretty simple, and he 3D printed these as well. So that was really cool. So, and then the eyebrows were sculpted by my friend on Instagram. And I think they only cost me like 10 bucks. So that was cheap. And then the expensive part was like the shoes because the shoes are from a Toy Story collection, Mr. Potato Head. So I actually had to ruin a very expensive toy to paint it myself, gut the bottom, add a custom peg so that it can have separate shoes that are movie accurate. So I did have to ruin a... Toy Story Collection Mr. Potato Head, which is very rare, uh, to get those shoes, to get the nose, because that's a Toy Story Collection nose. The mustache, I wasn't able to get an extra one, so that's just a Toy Story 4 Play School one. Play School lips, because it looks like the movie. And these are actually modified Toy Story Collection uh, Potato Head ears that I had to modify a peg on because they didn't come originally with a peg. They came with some like octagon specialized shape. So I had to cut those off, add my own pegs, so, and then this suction hat is original from 1987, Play School. To eBay and finding these 1987 bendy arms from an old potato. It cost me about 50 bucks to cut it off of an old potato so I can add a custom peg because the original was like this clunky thing I had to shave off of a potato. So everything is custom that you see uh, for Mr. Potato Head and Mrs., which we'll get into in a bit, but it was expensive for sure. I think total investment for me when it was all said and done for Mr. Potato Head, it cost me about $600 because of accessories, materials, and it just, it was a headache, but it took me a long time to make, but it was worth the effort. So about 600 bucks, I think I invested in Mr. Potato Head here. We're gonna showcase this one. I just did a review of Mrs. Potato Head on my channel. So if you wanna see that video, it's definitely up on the Movie Accurate playlist. But these have bendy arms as well. It's 3D printed from my good friends out of the United Kingdom called Toy Story Custom Replicas on Instagram. Look them up. 
They made this Mrs. Potato Head for me, separate sh eyes, separate shoes, and of course also a working back compartment. Toy companies have not made this yet. I don't know why Play School. And then Play School made this Toy Story 4 purse and it fits her, so I just put it on her. And yeah, it's just it's amazing to have a toy mode. Miss Potato Head with separate eyes, finally. So toy companies never made this. Can you believe this? It's never been made. It's only been custom made. And everything was removable, which is awesome, and she functions like the movie. And they look amazing together. So I'm really proud of these potato heads. This was a total of about $180 with shipping. I'm going to round it to $200. So you're looking at a total of $800 I spent on these potato heads. But no regrets. I love them. And they're movie accurate. And they look great with the rest of my collection. Next we have movie accurate Wheezy. Again, a box that I didn't expect. We didn't technically see this box in the movie. But at Walt Disney World Florida, they have this blown up outside the Slinky Dog Dash ride, which I think is pretty epic. And now I can actually have a actual box and it has amazing artwork. It looks like it came right out of Alice Toy Barn, including the Alice Toy Barn logo here in the corner. And obviously it functions like a real box. And inside I have a, not only a certificate of authenticity, I have my other Wheezy collection in there which is awesome. I've done video reviews on all this, but it's great to see them together. And Wheezy is perfect. This to me is the perfect Wheezy. It is movie accurate size. It squeaks just like the movie, the squeakers in the mouth, which is proper placement. And the bow tie is great. Everything on Wheezy is proportioned like the movie. It looks fantastic with the other toys and scales, 100% like the movie. So yeah, this is amazing. One of my favorites. Uh, they're all my favorites, but this is really, really cool. I just love this Wheezy, and it comes with an awesome box as a bonus. Now, this Wheezy only costs about $170, so not it was more affordable and definitely worth it. Made from Cop on Instagram. Next, we have the Hockey Puck from Toy Story 1. This is made by Toy Story QC on Instagram as well. Really love it. It's got some nice textured on it, um, smooth on the back. It's very solid. I don't feel like it'll break. I don't want to drop it either to test that, but it's a great hockey puck from Toy Story 1 when Potato Head's like, what you looking at, you hockey puck? It's really funny. And he has his arms stretched out. I wish the arms had articulation. They don't move at all. But it's a nice static uh, pose of the hockey puck, and it's just really cool to have. This was not expensive. It only cost me $30, which is not expensive. Next, we have some Toy Story Collection Aliens. These are exclusive glow-in-the-darks that they released at Target years ago. At retail, these originally were 10 bucks each, but because I bought them late on eBay and inflation, and things have gone up in price, I spent about $90 for these three. But to make up for it, I made it more movie accurate, and they're modified with an actual real squeaker that I drilled into the bottom, because they didn't come with real squeakers. Imagine that, right? And they actually squeak like the movie. So that's why I consider this a movie accurate mod, because they squeak just like the movie. Here we have another toy that I'm baffled that the toy companies have not made yet. A actual movie accurate scale, Trixie. This is made from Toy Story QC on Instagram. He is a 3D print artist. The head moves, um, articulates really well, which is nice. Her mouth is able to open and close. And you can pose the mouth however you'd like. It stays in place, which is really helpful. The paint job is really nice. Her legs uh, have great articulation. You can move them up, back and forward like that. And same thing with the giant legs in the back. They swivel as well and that works. And then the tail, which is my favorite part, for storage, it actually is removable. It kind of mimics the Toy Story Collection Rex. It has the same ability, but it's really nice to have that. It's something he didn't have to add, but it's great because you can just take it on, put it back on, and it'll fit any display case because that's a really that's helpful. That's how I fit Trixie in my display case because it has that feature. Mm -hmm. So this is awesome. This one cost me about three hundred and fifty dollars, worth every penny. It's an amazing toy, good price for a movie accurate prop, especially something this huge and giant because this is a big dinosaur toy. It's got weight to it. It's just an amazing piece. And Disney Store, please take notes. Make this for the fans. They would really like to buy this. One of my favorite movie accurate mods in this collection is Ken and Barbie, modeled after Toy Story 3, Ken and Barbie. That was the look I was going for. This Ken is from a Hawaiian vacation set 
I took his clothes off and replaced it with a 1988 Mattel Animal Loving Ken clothes set. So that made him look more accurate to the movie. Because his face sculpt and body looked most like the movie, it was just the clothes. It was Hawaiian clothes. So that's why I chose this Ken. Because there's a lot of Kens on the market, and the Made for Each Other set didn't like as much. So the Hawaiian Ken for me, that was more expensive. I think I spent... For Hawaiian Ken, about $200 to buy because they're just really expensive these days. So $200 for that. Animal Loving Ken cost me about another 100 So you're looking at about $400 for this Ken right here. But you got to admit, this is the most movie accurate Ken you can buy with, you know, taking clothes and figures and then smashing them together. Uh, you get this awesome uh, Ken who looks exactly like he jumped out of Toy Story 3. So that's how this Ken was achieved for movie accuracy. Now this Barbie over here as well took a little time to make. Uh, her clothes are actually from the Toy Story 4 Mattel Barbie that came out to commemorate Toy Story 4. But I noticed her body was wrong. So the clothes was taken from that. Found a Barbie from Toy Story 3 2010. Used that body and I didn't like her head sculpt. But she did come with the right body and heels. So then this head was transplanted from Toy Story 4 Mattel Barbie. So what you're looking at is a hybrid of Toy Story 3 Barbie and Toy Story 4 Barbie. Toy Story 3 Barbie cost me a lot, I think about $80. And then uh, Toy Story 4 Barbie was cheap, she was about 20. So you're looking at a total of $100 investment for this Barbie, which isn't bad at all. It's actually, I could have spent more. Ken was more expensive to make, uh, but this Barbie, thanks to Toy Story 4 Mattel Barbie, they did a great job, minus the, the body, I would say because she has joints on the other one, she has flat feet on the other one, no heels. So that's why I had to make this hybrid Barbie as well. So that's why you're looking at two movie accurate custom Barbie and Ken, and it was pricey, but worth it. So I spent about $300 for Ken, $100 for Barbie, so $400 total investment, but they look just like the movie, and I'm really happy with them. And you would think the toy companies would make them just like this, they do not. Uh, they make things that are close to this, but I have to Frankenstein things together decades apart sometimes as these clothes are from 1988 and this outfit's from 2019 but the body itself uh, minus the head sculpt is from 2010. Here we have Dolly from Toy Story 3. Adam, my friend on Instagram, he did the googly eyes and the, he did the whole thing and it looks amazing. Later on I did get uh, thanks to my friend Raul online, Raul Stevens, he added this uh, dress. He sent it to me which had the upgraded Fair Elise, which looks awesome, just like the movie. So I'm really happy with this overall. Googly eyes are amazing. She has the tooth because the Toy Story collection dolly didn't come with a tooth. And also the proportions were just slightly off. I did get this doll stand for her. This was about 90 bucks, I remember. And yeah, it's a great dolly. Looks like the movie. Truly movie accurate, in my opinion. And a fantastic addition to the movie accurate collection. Here we have Knifey and Forky. I actually made Knifey from scratch. I went to the craft store, you know, probably spent about 20 bucks in materials because I had the stickers and the googly eyes, you know. So it was very cheap, about 20 bucks, but I got a Knifey. You know, she's not perfect, obviously. Uh, you know, the, the putty that I used is not good because after a while it cracks, it leaks, it melts. I hate using organic materials. <laughs> a lot of people were like, Tia, girl, why don't you use real putty or clay? Well, the reason why is because it, it, it cracks. It doesn't hold up over time. It's just messy and damages your surfaces. And Not a fan. I like real fake stuff because fake stuff lasts forever, <laughs> you know, <laughs> at least for a long time. Uh, the organic stuff melts, cracks, peels. I just, I hate using organic materials. But it's my knifey. I'm proud of her. I did show how to make this on my channel. She has googly eyes. Very cool. Uh, so yeah, only 20 bucks for that. And then this one as well. I think with shipping from Walmart, it was only $20. It's a build your own forky kit, but of course I added my own character because I added the expression myself and did the little blush on the cheeks. And I also added Bonnie on the bottom. So you're looking about, these are probably the cheapest toys in my collection as well for movie accurate custom mods, but it looks like forky and knifey from the movie. So I really like that and they look great and they're fun. They're fun to make, so I actually had fun making these from scratch. So we're about $40 investment for these. You're looking at my modified Bo Peep Toy Story 4. She has Disney clothes on that were from, it was only $30 for that doll, which wasn't expensive. The expensive part was a signature collection Bo Peep that you see here, which retails at 100 So 
that was a very expensive doll but she looks really great she looks more like the toy story 4 uh, Bo Peep which is very accurate so I did like that she came with sheep but her sheep were not Toy Story 4 I modified that as well with the help of my friend Emma um, she's a great friend of mine and she actually helped design this in Photoshop for me the taco sticker then I ripped it up myself because it looked like that in the movie and so you see that detail was added as well as these star stickers here and on this back we have some jewels and a little sunflower sticker i was trying to like just model what i saw on screen and so that's what i tried to do it's not perfect but definitely looks like the sheep now from toy story 4. now the staff that you see here is a signature collection bo peep staff but i added the actual uh white rope that you see there wrapped around the staff it's a real rope that i found thread and I did mod that myself. I also added the bandages on the arms, which is like a gauze material. This was like a washi tape material I found for the purple band, and it stuck on just nicely. So those are the modifications I added. And then the little mini Giggle McDimples that you see here on her shoulder is actually taken from an Epic Moves Bo Peep set. Luckily, I found some used items from that set on an eBay auction. It only cost me about $20, so that wasn't expensive to add. But I thought she looked great on her shoulder there, even though it didn't come with her. So this is definitely all custom, uh, very fun to make in journey and process. I wasn't happy with Toy Story 4 Bo Peeps that I saw on the market, so I had to make one my, on my own. Although it was more expensive to make, it was definitely worth the final result. The pink bow was added by me. I uh, tied it and glued it on. Uh, so that was a custom job as well to get that bow on her hair and uh, everything else is from the Disney Store, the clothing. Total investment for what you see here spent, uh, Disney Store Bo Peep $30, Signature Collection Bo Peep $100, so, and you know, other materials weren't really that expensive, but about $130 for this Bo Peep. Yes, I uh, Canada! You're looking at Duke Kaboom, my favorite character from Toy Story 4. If you're gonna ask me, what's your favorite character? Well, exclusively to Toy Story 4 movie, my favorite character is Duke Kaboom. He's just a really cool toy. He is a stunt action bike stuntman, and it's cool because he has an awesome, funny uh, mustache, and he has a helmet that you can take off of his body, and then you can see his expression right there. So really cool. I added a custom movie accurate cape, which was painted and cut from a t-shirt, basically, and traced from the original cape and you can see it's all cloth. It was unscrewed here in the back so that I can properly screw it in his body. So it's definitely not gonna come off. It's very strong and sturdy and it looks really cool. So it wasn't really expensive to do this, paint and cloth from a t-shirt. So I'm not really gonna add this up as a, you know, an additional cost. Duke Kaboom cost me $70 at retail because I first bought him. He went on discount later on for like 30 or 40 bucks, but $70 was what this cost me in his signature collection. Duke Kaboom, my favorite for Toy Story 4 in the collection. And it's cool to have a movie accurate cape that flows. So when he rides the stump bike, you can wave in the wind just like the movie. So that is a really cool custom movie accurate mod for Duke Kaboom. And here as a bonus is a movie accurate Rocky inside a movie accurate box made by Joe Quim, my good friend from Brazil he made this box which is really cool and we can put the movie accurate Rocky figure Rocky Gibraltar in there I will do a detailed review on this very soon but for now I kinda wanna give you a secret surprise preview of this and it's gonna be awesome so stay tuned on my channel for that here are my up-to-date movie accurate custom Toy Story toys as of 2021 these are toys that you cannot buy into a toy store if you walk in there, you can't buy it. These are all custom made or modified in some way, shape, or form, either by me or my friends that I found around the world to help me make this collection possible. I wish toy companies could take notes and start making more movie accurate Toy Story toys like these so the fans could buy something closer to the movie and, I don't know, just enjoy them in, your, in their collections like I have. It's been an amazing journey. It was a very costly journey, uh, but it's amazing to see what's possible. If you work hard, dream big, never give up, put your mind to it, you can accomplish anything and make impossible and impossible. I never thought it was gonna be possible to get a movie anchor at Woody and Buzz Lightyear like you see here, but because of my friends and my hard work and never giving up on my dreams, I was able to accomplish this amazing movie accurate Toy Story collection. Total investment of all the toys you see here cost me about $5,500 after I did all the math. 
and that is a lot of money so basically you're looking at five hundred fifty five hundred dollars in prototypes but they're worth it to accomplish and make to show people that it is possible now if toy companies can take on the cost they could probably lower the price at retail for us to the thirty forty dollars maybe a hundred dollars price point because some of the toys as you know i spent more hundreds and hundreds of dollars because it's expensive to make i have to 3d print and design and sculpt and then hire people to do that for me if i can't do it myself so that's why it was very expensive but definitely for me worth it because i really enjoy these movie accurate toys and it's amazing to see them come to real life from the movie screen in a way a movie accurate prop so i can be the real life andy partners thank you so much for liking and commenting on this video it really helps the youtube algorithm if you want to help support me get to 100,000 subs this year all you got to do is hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell see you later for future videos on this channel and i'll see you partners on the next video review you want the real buzz like you you're now you're an action figure you are a sad 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 strange little man you are a sad 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 strange little man are a child's plaything! Hey, Ham! Look! I'm Picasso! I don't get it.